God's explosive power over sickness. In Matthew chapter 8. I'm going to read to you from verse 16 and verse 17. Matthew chapter 8 verses 16 and 17. And as I read this, remember that Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. That what he did at that time, he is doing tonight. If you were there at that time with your sickness, affliction, or infirmity, he would, have, he would have healed you. And the Bible says it's the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Congrats for being here tonight. Congratulations for being here tonight. Where are you? I said, where are you? Something good is going to happen to you. Give me a good, good or sure state. Amen. Look at Matthew chapter 8 verse 16. And when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and he healed all that were sick. He cast out the spirits with his word. You don't need any other thing. With his word. And tonight, when I come to point number three, I'll be telling you if you have any activity of Satan, of spirits, of sickness there, I'm going to speak the word of Christ from here instantaneously. Those things will go. He cast out the spirits with his word. And he healed. Tell me the next word there. He healed. I said, tell me the next word there. What does all mean? All means I am part of that. All means my name is there. All means that my miracle is there. Anybody excluded? Who are the people going to get it tonight? How many? How many? I said how many? And he, he that does not change. He who remains the same. He the same yesterday, today and forever. He healed all that was sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. That it might be fulfilled. Jesus has a commitment. The commitment is not to your crime. Lord, look at my tears. It doesn't, it's not committed to your crying. The commitment is not committed to, Lord, I've given so much money, I've paid my tithes and offering. It's not committed to your tithes and offering. It's not committed to your drinking water. Water from Jordan, water from Jerusalem, water from the Red Sea, water from Syrian Sea. It's not committed to your drinking water. It's 
is not committed to your anointing oil. He is committed to fulfilling the word that has been written concerning him. Whether you cry or you don't cry, whether you have oil or you don't have oil, you have water, you don't have water, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Himself, himself, by strife to are healed, by the name of Jesus, the power of his cross, the power of his atonement, because of what he has done, to fulfill what I've been reaching concerning him. He says because of that, he carried all our infirmities, he took away all our sicknesses. They came, they prayed, they were healed. They came, they requested, they were made whole. And tonight is still the same as ever. God's explosive power over sickness. Will it happen today? Will it happen to you? It's coming your way. Number three. God's expressed promise of satisfaction. Uh, you know, the promise of God is it, not something you'll say, well, I went there, I saw other people, the God's blessing, but me, I, I, I guess God has done enough. See what God has done. The air we breathe, sufficient for everyone. The water in God's ocean, sufficient for everyone. The ground on which we sow, sufficient for every farmer. The parcel of land on which we build, sufficient for everyone to have a shelter on his head. If every other sin is sufficient and satisfactory, how do you think the blessing of God will be less than that? You will get your share tonight. In John chapter 10 verse 10. John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. But I am calm. It's there tonight. I am calm. It's right by your side. I am come that they might have life. We would have that's sufficient. That's enough. I have come that they might have life. Eternal life. Spiritual life. Physical life. Happy life. Healthy life. A life that is free. Free to succeed. Free to move on. Life. Lie without any subtraction of any good sin. I am come that they might have life. And then it says, and that they might have it more abundantly. Uh, have you noticed what is there? We can say, I'm come that they might have life, number one. 
Number two, I'm, I've come that they might have life abundantly. We would have said, Lord, thank you. You've done more than enough. I am come that they might have life. I am come that they might have life abundantly. He says, don't go yet. There's something else. I am come that they might have life more abundantly. And tonight is there for you. There is no discrimination. That's why he says, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy lady. And I will give you rest. I will give you life. I will give you forgiveness. I will give you salvation. I will give you healing. I will give you deliverance. I will give you eternal life. Come and everything is available for you. Today is a God of salvation. He has a plan of salvation. And he has you in mind. Today there's a plan and power for healing. Any sickness in your life, he can take away, he will take away. He has included you in the manifestation of that power. And today there is a promise of satisfaction and sufficiency. And has included you in the plan. Now whosoever will may come. And the blessing of God is reaching you right now. Are you there? I said are you there? I said the blessing of God is reaching you right now in Jesus' name. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. This is the moment of the beginning of his manifestation. He wants to forgive your sin. He wants to give you salvation. And then after that, he wants to give you healing. He wants to use the dynamite from heaven and blow away every infirmity, every sickness you have in your body, in your life. And this is a moment of decision. If you are asking that the first thing to be done, that is the plan of salvation. If you are saying, I want to recognize I am included in that plan. All sins forgiven. Guilt taken away. Condemnation taken away. Eternal life given to you as a gift. And you say, yes, Lord God of salvation. I thank you for that plan of salvation. I am included in that plan of salvation. I want that salvation, forgiveness, eternal life right now. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand. That's all it takes. It just wants your cooperation. To say, yes, I want your salvation. Where are you? Just raise up your hand. Salvation. Forgiveness. Eternal life. If you're raising up your hand, you'll stand up where you are. And then the salvation of the Lord will come to you right there. You're raising up your hand. Where are you? Where are you? You can, if you count out yourself, that's you. That's your fault. But if you say, I have part in that plan. Salvation, I'm included in that plan. Eternal life, I'm included in that plan. Tonight is the night of salvation for me. 
Whosoever comes to Christ, he will for no reason cast out. So just stand up. You are raising up your hand. You are saying, Oh Lord, here am I. I believe. Here am I. I accept. Here am I. I embrace your plan of salvation, including me. While you stand up, just quietly tell the Lord, Lord, I know I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. I've sinned against God. I've sinned against my neighbors. I've sinned even against myself. But I hear of your plan of salvation. That it includes me. Lord, I come. Forgive me. Cleanse my heart. Change my life. Grant me your salvation now. Lord, I believe you will not reject me. I believe that Jesus now is my Savior. Thank you, Lord. I pray the strength and the grace to live in newness of life. You grant unto me now. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you at, that, at this time. Thank you for the plan of salvation that includes everyone all those who have come to you now from the depths of their hearts i pray that your salvation will be theirs in jesus name grant them your forgiveness grant them your grace grant them your salvation Send them forth to live now by your power in newness of life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Your time of healing, deliverance, miracle has now come. It's coming your way. What are you there? How many are going to receive that miracle power tonight? Be it unto you according to your declaration in Jesus' name. If you are blind, you are lame, or deaf and dumb, or you have epilepsy, you have any swelling in your body? Goiter or hunchback? Elephantiasis, big leg. Water hair that is swelling for that child. Or cancer. Tuberculosis. Any kind of problem. Or so kidney that has a problem. Livers have any problem. The power of God is here tonight to blow that sickness away. I'm going to pray for you now. 
and I'm going to send the explosive power of the word into your life. Once you hear the final amen, that means it is so. Amen means let it be, it is so. So after the final amen, if you were blind before, look up here, so the direction you are hearing sound, look up, you'll be able to see me. And then, if you are lame, you get up, you start walking. Something swollen in your body, check it up now, see it, because you won't see it again after this prayer. You brought anyone in chains because they are mad, after the prayer, you loosen that chain, everything will be all right. You are ready, where are you? It's coming your way, where are you? Get ready now, get ready now. The healing is in the power, authority, the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because you will never fail. Almighty God, we have declared already you are God and you change not. Lord Jesus, we have declared it already. The same yesterday, today, and forever. I come assuring your people that you will not fail, that you cannot fail. I pray, O oh Lord, manifest your power to them now in Jesus' name. That brain problem, that madness, the spirit of uh, madness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, for those who are deaf and dumb. Spirit of deafness and spirit of dumbness, I command you right now. Come out in Jesus' name. Those dumb people and those deaf people begin to hear and begin to speak out. Lord, I pray for those who have any sweat in their body. I command that goiter, come out in Jesus' name. That hunchback be removed in Jesus' name. Elephant chest is swollen in your legs. I command, get out in Jesus' name. That are near there, I don't allow you to remain there. I command, be healed in Jesus' name. That big water head, I command that that water in the head will be drained out. That child will become normal. Every seed that has taken possession of that head, the touch of the Lord is upon you now. Be made whole in Jesus' name. That disease of cancer be healed in Jesus' name. Tuberculosis be healed in Jesus' name. HIV AIDS, I command you, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who are blind. Touch those blind eyes right now. Touch those blind eyes right now. Remove the bandage of Satan and the blackness and darkness in their sight in Jesus' name. Those who are lame, 
legs paralyzed, hands withered, neck that cannot stand, head cannot stand on the neck, the vertebrae on the back, uh, the, the backbone that is not strong. I pray, Lord, touch them right now. Heal them in Jesus' name. That short leg, I command that short leg, grow out right now in Jesus' name. Short hand, I command that shorter hand, grow out in Jesus' name. And those who have any part of their body missing. I command that there will be a creative miracle right now. That those parts that are missing be created by the Lord, even in your body, in Jesus' name. Kidneys receive your healing. Livers receive your healing. All the lungs receive your healing. Lord, everywhere now, from the right to the left, from the front to the back, those who are inside, those who are outside, I send forth the miracle power upon every one of you now in Jesus' name. That explosive power of miracle be manifest in your life right now. Lord, I thank you because I know it is done. It is done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, it is done. Amen, it is done. You can check up yourself now and see the manifestation of the power of God. If you are blind before, you are no more blind. Open your eyes and look and see. You had something swollen in your body before. Check it up. Now you are made whole. And any, any condition you had before, check up. Do what you couldn't do before. You have got your miracle. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the glorious meetings we're having. We thank you because you are leading us to rest in Canaan land. And we pray, Lord, you grant rest to everyone in Jesus' name. I pray that this will be another period of blessing. Another period of breaking every yoke. Everything that causes restlessness in any life. You put a permanent end to it in Jesus' name. Bless all your people. Permanent blessing. Extraordinary blessing. Uncommon blessing. Put into every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 19. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. I've been there for brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By new and living way which he has consecrated for us. Through the veil that he is to say his flesh. Having an high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. 
having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies wash with pure water let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised let us hold fast the confession of our faith the profession of our faith let us hold fast the testimony of our faith let us hold fast the declaration proclamation of the faith we testify about because he is faithful that promised the faithfulness of god is the basis for our faith the faithfulness of god that god cannot fail that whatever god has said whatever god has promised is as good as done because he is going to do it he cannot fail he will not fail you and because of that faithfulness on the side of god that's why we have faith in god as god said he will save you he is faithful he will save as god said he will restore the backslider he is faithful he will restore as God said, he will heal you. He is faithful. He must heal you. As he said, he will break every yoke in your life. That he will destroy the works of the devil. That he will give you abundant life, a happy life, a rich life, a prosperous life. Look at the promises of God. They cannot fail. As he said, he's taking you to heavenly Canaan. That he doesn't want you to perish in the wilderness. That he's going to get you to heaven by all means. God is faithful, he cannot fail. It is the faithfulness of God that informs our faith in him. That's why we want to examine from the word of God. Faith in God's faithfulness. Faith in God's faithfulness. This is what gives you confidence when you come to the Lord. There is no shadow of doubt in your mind when you come to the Lord. You will examine the promises of God. What he said he will do for you. What he said he will give unto you. And you will hold on to that promise. And you know that heaven and earth may pass away. The skies may roll up. The seas may dry up. The oceans may dry up. And the mountains may move. But the promises of God to you in particular must be fulfilled. That's why it tells us in that Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19. It says, having therefore brethren to a boldness to enter into the very presence of God, the holiest by the blood of Jesus. The holiest of all, that's the holy of holies. The tabernacle of the children of Israel had three parts. The outer court, the holy place, and then the holy of holies, the holiest of all. That's where you have the ark of the covenant. That's where you have the representation of the presence and the power of God. 
in the Old Testament, only the high priest could enter that place once in a year. But now after the death of Christ, with the blood of Jesus Christ, we now have confidence and boldness to enter into that holiest of all. And you can come right to the presence of the Lord. You can come right into the power of the Lord. And you know that you are not going to be denied whatever you are asking from the Lord. He, he goes on to say, after he tells us that we have boldness to enter into that holy of holies. It says it's by a new and living way. The old way of condemnation is abolished. The old way of fearfulness and timidity, all that is gone. Because all the condemnation of the Old Testament, the blood of Jesus has wiped everything away. All the fear of if I enter the Holy of Holies without appropriate conduct, then I might be stricken dead. All that fear is gone. They will find that I'm not the high priest in Israel. Maybe I will not be accepted there. All that is gone. It says now every believer, every child of God, you have the boldness, you have the right, you have the authority, you have the permission to enter right into the presence of the Lord without fear, without condemnation, and without any fear of death. And he says, it's by the new and the living way. And he says, that way is consecrated for us. It's appointed for us. The Lord has made the way by his death on the cross of Calvary, by the shedding of the blood of the Lamb, that there should be no fear in your heart. There should be no doubt in your mind. That the Lord is waiting for you in the Holy of Holies. And the presence of the Lord will surround your life. The power of God will overshadow your life. And then he tells us, having therefore an high priest over the house of God. It's making use of the Old Testament illustration to give us a New Testament revelation. The Old Testament people had a high priest. Any time any challenge broke out in Israel, and the high priest came in with his sacrifice and incense and censor. Every time the plague will stop. And now he comes to the new covenant, the new testament. And he says, We have a high priest. His name is Jesus. Any challenge in your life, any challenge in your family, any challenge in the church of the living God, our high priest comes in and the problem is solved. And Jesus, our high priest, is still alive. He comes to your life at this time. Comes to your family at this time. The plague is over. The problems are over. The challenges, they come to an end. Because our high priest, Jesus Christ, is still alive for you, for me, for us all. Then he said, let us draw near. He says, 
don't drag your feet and don't draw back. Draw near in full assurance of faith. In full assurance of faith. Because he is faithful that promised. And I pray that the promises of God will be yes and amen for you this day in Jesus' name. As I said, we're looking at this passage. And we're talking on faith in God's faithfulness. There are three things we're going to look at before we pray. Because there's going to be prayer. And God is going to answer your prayer. Faith in God's faithfulness. Three things we're going to look at. Number one, the proper perception of God's faithfulness. The proper perception of God's faithfulness. What do you know about the faithfulness of God? That helps you to understand any promise you look at, that promise will never fail. And you can rest on him. Rely on him completely. When you have that proper perception in the faithfulness of God. Number two, the precious promises to the faithful. The precious promises of God that God has made to you in your place as a believer who is faithful to the Lord. Number three, the peculiar privileges of the faithful. Privileges that are yours already. And you'll know the practical possession of those privileges even from this day. And God's goodness will never fail in your life. Well, let's come back to number one. The proper perception of God's faithfulness. Look back again at that verse 23. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. It says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. God has given you a promise. Maybe you were reading the Bible and the promise came out and the Lord said, that is yours. Maybe you were praying and God spoke to you and he said, this is what I will do. Maybe the choir was singing and something came out of that song. A promise came to your heart and said, that promise is mine. Maybe your pastor was counseling you and a promise came out and you know that this promise is yours. He says, let us hold that fast. Don't let it go. The wind may blow. The storm may come. Whatever challenges you have in life, all those things will change. But God is a faithful God. Hold fast the profession of your faith without wavering to the very end. Then he said in the last part of that verse, For he is faithful that promised. As we talk about proper perception of God's faithfulness, what does that mean that he is faithful? He is trustworthy. He cannot fail. He will do what he said he will do. The skies may roll up like we said. The oceans may dry up like we said. 
everything may be like in a commotion but it will not affect the faithfulness of God that's what you need to understand and know about the faithfulness of God in Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9 Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9 Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God. When you pray and understand your faith, your God you are praying to is the faithful God. When you read the Bible and God says, this is what I'll do for you, understand. Your God is a faithful God. All these messages we're hearing Monday, Sunday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, every time. Remember what God said he will do. He is a faithful God. He must do it. He said in that verse 9, is the faithful God which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. His faithfulness does not stop only in 140 period, in a period of 40 years. He was faithful to Moses and the children of Israel. And then he says he is faithful unto a thousand generations. What's your understanding of one generation? Let's say, for example, a generation is only 40 years. A thousand generations will be 40,000 years. Even, even if you say that a generation is only 10 years, then thousand generations will be 10,000 years. And the time of Moses until this time is just about 3,000 years. That means that generation after generation, all the promises that God had given to a thousand generations, about 40,000 years, that faithfulness is still there. Have that understanding. Whenever you pray, it's like Moses praying before the Lord. He's only quoting the promise of God. He's only saying, you are a God who is faithful, who will keep mercy and will keep your promises for your people. God, God said, I'm going to destroy the children of Israel. Moses said, God, you cannot do that. You must not do that. Remember your word unto Abraham. God said, that's right, I will not destroy them. He was faithful to his word. And to a thousand generations, 40,000 years, he's still faithful and faithful and faithful. If something happened and then God said, I'm going to destroy your family, you come back to God like Moses did. God, you will not. God, you cannot. God, you must not. Because look at your promise. You said you'll bless me and my house. God will say, that's all right. I will not destroy. Because he's faithful to a thousand generations. 
Psalm 36, I'm reading from verse 5. Psalm 36, I'm reading from verse 5. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. And you understand what the Lord is saying here? When it says it reaches unto a thousand generations, that is, we call it uh, horizontal. It's moving from here to there, from the east unto the west. It's so long that you cannot see the edge. But now, it's talking about something vertical. The clouds are up there, and your faithfulness reaches onto the clouds very, very far. High. That is, whatever the enemies are, whatever the problems are, whatever the challenges are, if they're on the ground, on the sea, horizontal. The faithfulness of God will get rid of them for you in Jesus' name. If they're up in the air, in the powers of the sky, his faithfulness, the fulfillment of his promise, reaches unto the sky, unto the clouds. It says, whether you are thinking of something on, on the ground or you are thinking of something in the sky, the faithfulness of God assures you the promise of God will be yes and amen in your life. Psalm 119. 119. I'm reading from verse 19. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. There may be people that will say, all right, God's faithfulness is unto a thousand generations. The reason why God said that is that he thought you will calculate and know that a generation is about 40 years and a thousand generations will be 40,000 years. That's long, long, long enough. But should in case you don't know how to calculate 40,000 generations. He says, what I mean is my faithfulness is unto all generations. And now you cannot escape all generations. In our generation, God will be faithful unto you. God saved in the past generations, is saving today. God healed in the past generations. God is healing in our generation. God delivered the oppressed in the past former generations. God is delivering the oppressed in this generation. Look at the time of Jesus Christ. At that time of the generation of the children of Israel, he blessed men, he blessed women, he blessed children, he blessed everyone that came because he was faithful in that generation. In this, our generation, when a man comes to Christ, he will bless him. When a woman comes to Christ, he will bless her. Because thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou was established the earth and it abideth. 
day continue this day according to thine uh, ordinance. For all are thy servants. All are thy servants. That is everything on earth. They are the servants of the Lord. And the Lord will use them to bless your life. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 24. 1 Thessalonians chapter, 20, chapter uh, 5 verse 24. For he is faithful that calleth you who also will do it. He is the Lord and he called you. You have answered that call. He called you to repent and say, yes, Lord, I repent. He called you to righteousness. Yes, Lord, I want to be righteous. He called you to salvation. Yes, Lord, I want to be saved. He called you to sanctification. Yes, Lord, I want to be sanctified. He called you to his service. Yes, Lord, I want to serve you. He called you and says he wants you to live with him in heaven. Yes, Lord, I want to go to heaven. He called you to healing. Yes, Lord, I want to be healed. He called you. He said, why are you oppressed? I'm calling you to deliverance. Yes, Lord, I want to be delivered. He called you to bless an abundant life. Yes, Lord, that's what I want. Faithfully see that call it you who also will do it. He will do it in your life. I said he will do it in your life. You will not be a child of disappointment. And there will be no disappointment in your life in Jesus' name. Point number two now. The precious promises to the faithful. The precious promises to the faithful. The promise of God is all for you. Whenever you have a problem, there is a simple way to solve that problem. Look at a promise of God that is appropriate for solving that problem. If you're having trial, look at a promise of God that will remove that trial. If you're facing a point, a problem of weakness in your life, Look at the promise of God that says you will not be weary, you will not be weak. If you are sick anytime, look at the promise of God that says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. If you are having confusion and conflict in your family, Look at the promise of God that says, I'll give you peace, everlasting peace, overflowing peace. If you're witnessing, you're preaching, there's no power, there is no anointing, and there is no fruit. Look for a promise of God that promises you power, courage, boldness, anointing, and success and victory. Match your problems with his promises. And you remember God is a faithful God. All those promises he has made is going to fulfill everything. In 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 56. 
First Kings chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 56. And you will see that all you need to look for is the promise of God that applies to the particular peculiar problem in your life. Don't look at the problem. Hold on to the promise. The precious promises of the Lord. You will come out of that problem. First Kings chapter 8 verse 56. Blessed be the Lord that has given rest unto his people Israel. He gave them rest, he will give you rest. He gave them rest according to all that he promised. There has not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand.